Hello, hello, more Dimmers here and welcome to Immortal Game of Garry Kasparov. An immortal game that means something really, really spectacular. Actually, that's the best game of uh, some player career. So uh, can you imagine that Garry Kasparov also have his own immortal game and he played a lot of wonderful and spectacular games and this one is the best of them. So the game was played in 1998 nine in Wegen Ze tournament very famous tournament and Gary Kasparov at that time was the world champion uh, he was number one with the ranking 2812 and he was already 35 years old very experienced player and he gonna play as white and his opponent Veselin Topaov uh, only 23 years old at that time but already very strong grandmaster uh, he's ranking 2700 and he was number 11 in the world and he's gonna play as black and Veselin Topalov just, you know, six years later uh, became the world champion, a uh, FIDE world champion and later he became also the member of very exclusive 2800 plus club uh, of the players. So uh, definitely worthy opponent. So let's see what happened on the board. Kasparov open with e4 and first surprise Topalov play d6 so he want to avoid um, any opening preparations as he usually don't play uh, Pierce defense uh, we have d4 knight on f6 knight c3 and here black actually can play c6 e5 or g6 uh, Topalov goes for the most popular move g6 and now also um, Kasparov can play f4 knight f3 but he prefer bishop on e3 we have bishop on g7 and now queen d2 preparing this battery uh, and the bishop on h6 and also preparing for the castle so these are um, uh, two ideas by Kasparov we have c6 so waiting with the castle f3 Kasparov also waiting and f3 is actually very a useful move because preparing g4 and then this attack on the king if king castle can be very very dangerous but also knight can't really jump on g4 to attack the bishop and control h6 at the same time so uh, f3 always good in this kind of position we have b5 so Topalov still waiting and attacking on the queen side we have knight g on e2 knight b on d7 and now Kasparov finish waiting and he play bishop on h6 and if black decide to castle that can be very very dangerous for example h4 e5 now bishop g7 king g7 h5 and there is very strong attack for example knight on h5 g4 knight h on f6 queen h6 and this is very very unpleasant position for black so uh, not really the greatest idea to castle here this is why Topalov play bishop on h6 we have queen on h6 and black can't castle so black will look for the castle on the queen side we have bishop on b7 preparing that and developing the bishop and here white could castle however it's very unpleasant if black actually played queen a5 followed by b4 and then a2 would be under attack so uh, not really a precise move so Kasparov of course was the world champion he played first a3 preparing the castle we have e5 and only now castle by Kasparov a uh, queen on e7 also preparing the castle and now king on b1 very important move Usually if you castle on the queen side is good to move the king on b1 of course uh, closer to this breathing window uh, so any tactics are not easy to to be made if the king is closer to the to the center but also in this particular position knight c1 and then knight can move to uh, b3 to control for example a5 uh, c5 also can jump to d3 uh, so the knight will be much more happy than you know staying on the king king side uh, we have a6 by Topalov knight on c1 as planned and now castle by Topalov knight on b3 as planned and now e takes on d4 we have rook takes on d4 and now c5 attacking the rook so a rook retreat and now d6 is the weak pawn uh, so black should uh, 
push it. Uh, so to power of play knight on b6 preparing uh, d5. Because part of play g3, making a space for the bishop, and now black could play d5, uh, and after bishop on h3, we check king b8, e5 is actually possible, and now black can take the pawn, but that would be the cost of the pawn on c5, so black would have to play with this isolated pawn, uh, not really comfortable, so probably knight e8 would be better, rook h on e1, and this position is... Uh, it's considered by the engine as equal. Black can, of course, uh, have some attack chances on the on the queen side, but at the same time, king is quite vulnerable without the you know uh, pawn shield. So white would have a very nice counter attacking chances. So black would have to be very very careful. Uh, so this is why after g3, to part of uh, prefers much safer king on b8. And okay, now white have to decide what to play. Queen on f4 of course is possible, preventing d5 because of the pin. Uh, also bishop on g2, normal developing move, but Kasparov have different idea. Knight on a5, knight on a5, and now attacking the bishop. And this bishop is quite important defender of the king. So Topalov um, retreat to a8, we have bishop on h3, and now d5 as planned. We have queen on f4 with check, king on a7, and now rook h on e1. And white already threatening some uh, some ideas like, um, you know, taking on d5 with attack on the queen. So black has to react somehow. And if d takes on e4, that would be a really bad idea. Because opening the position when the king is not really safe uh, is never a good idea. So for example, f takes on e4. Knight takes on e4, and it looks like uh, black can stand quite good here, but after knight on e4, rook d1, rook d1, bishop e4, now rook e1, and now there is no time for playing any uh, f5 moves, because uh, the knight can actually fork the king and the queen, the bishop uh, is pinned, so that's impossible, so rook on e8, now rook e4, Queen e4, queen c7, and there are a lot of tactical ideas like this. Uh, king a8, knight c6, and that checkmate is coming, nothing can be done. So uh, black really, really have to be very careful. Opening the position can be just deadly. This is why Topalov play d4. And now, objectively speaking, this knight should go, for example, to a2, to e2, these are the best move. But Kasparov was definitely in the attacking move and he was known that he wants the initiative. Even he losing some material, he want to be more active and he wanted to decide what's going on on the board. This is why knight on d5. And now... Black, of course, have to take this knight. It's very annoying knight, very dangerous. Uh, just which knight should take? If knight f on d5, it's losing. It's just losing. E takes on d5 with attack on the queen. And after queen on d6, queen f7. This is the problem. Queen f7, knight on d7, actually the only move, the, the bishop here controlling uh, d7, and now knight on c6, it's actually forced, b takes on c6, d takes on c6, now queen takes on c6, rook e7, and actually white winning the material, winning the minor piece and the game. So uh, that would be impossible to take with this knight, this is why Topalov play knight b takes on d5. We have e takes on d5, attacking the queen uh, with the rook, so uh, queen on d6, and now f7 can't be taken because knight is still on f6. And here is the position where Gary Kasparov started his immortal game. Rook on d4, sacrifice the rook on d4. And now, can black actually take the rook? Uh, it's possible, but much better move is king on b6. And then after b4, defending the knight, queen f4, exchanging the queens, rook on f4, knight d5, rook f7, c takes on b4, a takes on b4, knight on b4, now knight is under attack, so knight b3, 
rook d6 preventing any ideas like um, rook e6 and black stands much better uh, black have much comfortable game and that was chance for Topalov actually to reach that position and then continue the game however he takes c takes on d4 and now another uh, impressive move by Kasparov he didn't take queen on d4 Queen on d4 actually is losing the game. After queen on b6, rook e7, knight d7, and white has nothing here. Uh, the queen is hanging, the knight is hanging, so white would have to do something. So, for example, queen on c3. Now, rook h on e8, forcing actually white to do something about that. Rook on d7, rook on d7, bishop d7, and now bishop d5 controlling a2 and now we have some uh, mating ideas so white would have to retreat and after rook on e2 black just stands better black have extra exchange uh, and also uh, white have nothing here because uh, can't play on the dark squares because don't have dark square bishop and everything is going on the light squares and uh, black still have the light square bishop so pretty comfortable position for black of course it's winning so not queen on d4 here kasparov play another spectacular move and another rook sacrifice rook e7 with check what a move and this rook can't be taken this rook just can't be taken because queen on e7 just losing queen d4 with check king b8 queen b6 with check and now bishop b7 knight on c6 with check uh, bishop of course controls uh, c8 so uh, king on a8 and that would be a checkmate so uh, not possible here and also king on b8 also doesn't work queen on d4 and now checkmate is coming so a knight on d7 and now look at this queen this queen is the best central placed piece i think i've ever seen threatening checkmate here but also uh keeping an eye on a8 okay and this is very important so for example bishop on d7 and now if rook takes on d7 then of course we have queen h8 and winning the game winning the rook here and if bishop on d5 which looks uh, maybe slightly better c4 and now black don't have actually time to take on c4 because knight on c6 is coming and then the knight can't be taken because uh, the queen is hanging but also there are mating ideas here so uh, this is actually winning for white so here queen e7 but it also doesn't work even this move doesn't work because queen b6 this is the problem king a8 now queen a6 king b8 queen b6 king a8 bishop c6 now forcing to exchange knight c6 and now checkmate is coming and nothing can be done if queen on b7 then actually queen a5 and this is also checkmate so in this position actually sacrificing the second rook the rook can't be taken the king can't move to b8 the only way uh, for topalov is king on b6 this is what he played and now we have queen on d4 uh, and now king on a5 if queen on c5 it doesn't work because queen f6 with check queen on d6 and now another incredible move which uh which is here bishop on e6 it's very important move actually winning the tempo uh, if f takes on e6 of course is losing uh, losing the queen so um, not an option if bishop on d5 it also doesn't work because b4 this is very important tempo now the knight is protected uh, and if bishop on e6 this is a checkmate and now king can take the the knight so this is why it's important so in this position 
bishop on e8 but it also doesn't work because queen f7 and there are some mating ideas you know sacrificing the rook here and it's impossible to stop anything so uh this is why topalov play king on a5 now kasparov play b4 with check and king a4 and this probably what kasparov had in mind so this rook on d4 sacrifice and this rook e7 sacrifice led to this position with the king on a4 so really really beautiful idea and now what next because uh, look at the position count the material so black actually are up the rook and the knight okay and what white have is only the rook under attack and the queen and the bishop so now is the time to pause the video and find the winning combination for white find the best move in the position while i enjoy my cup of tea so the best move in the position the only like really really winning move is rook on a7 rook on a7 and black can do nothing about that what's the threat so threat is queen on c3 followed by queen on b3 what a wonderful idea checkmate the king poor king on a4 so if black try something like for example knight on d5 there is only one move which white have to find so again uh, try to find the move and it's are you ready rook a6 this is the another move and what is the idea after queen on a6 this is the only move queen b2 so not queen on c3 now because it's controlled by the knight but queen b2 and this is the idea here now checkmate is coming the only move for black actually is knight on c3 with check queen c3 bishop d5 now defending b3 but then king b2 you see that already now queen on b3 is coming followed by the pawn okay what a beautiful idea so for example queen on e6 bishop e6 bishop e6 queen b3 now bishop b3 c takes on b3 and checkmate what a checkmate that's a wonderful idea now black have two rooks two rooks and and white has almost nothing but still managed to checkmate beautiful checkmate uh, so knight on d5 doesn't work maybe bishop on d5 immediately now uh, b3 is controlled uh, queen on c3 anyway now rook h on e8 king b2 we know already everything here but now rook e2 okay so the pawn is pinned now the pawn can take on b3 but there is another move which you have to find the only move winning in this position for white so try to find the winning move for white in this position while i enjoy my cup of tea okay ready i think you found it but look at this position queen c7 bang and now queen can be taken because we have a checkmate on a6 so that's impossible and also there is no other moves because queen on a5 is coming that would be a checkmate so it's impossible queen e5 and after exchanging uh, the only move is bishop b7 uh, defending a6 but queen c7 and checkmate is coming and even rook on c2 cannot help because queen c2 so checkmate coming from this direction from this direction from this direction that's incredible and finally bishop on b7 also doesn't work rook on b7 yes it's possible queen on d5 but now rook on b6 and now checkmate is coming again a5 rook a6 now rook a8 defending but now queen e3 and after rook on e6 king b2 white don't need to be fast king b2 
and nothing can be done. Check my this coming. A takes on B4, okay. A takes on B4, King takes on B4. The problem is now Queen C3 with check, King A4, and now we have also the checkmate. So what a move. Rook on A7 is winning the game. It's winning, but Gary Kasparov missed that move and instead he played queen on C3. So he want to checkmate immediately. However, Toparov find the best move in the position. He didn't play bishop on D5 because it's losing. And we know already why, because king B2, Queen e6 and now nothing can be done here. The checkmate is coming, okay? So we saw that already, but he found queen on d5. And this is huge difference because now king on b2 doesn't work because queen d4 pinning the queen and winning the game with extra rook and extra knight is of course easily win for black. So after queen on d5, uh, Kasparov of course didn't play king on b2, uh, he was the world champion for the reason, and he played rook on a7. So look at the position, it's almost the same order of the moves, just slight difference and it's already not so clear win uh, as it was. And now Veselin Toparov find another the only move in the position and he play bishop on b7. Uh, Gary Kasparov takes rook on b7 and now of course uh, queen can't take because we have a checkmate here. So queen on c4 uh, asking to exchange the queens but Gary Kasparov is not interested. Queen f6 with the mating ideas, with the mating threat actually. And here Topalov have the chance to play rook on d1. Rook on d1 and after king on b2, rook a8 defending the pawn. Queen b6 is the only move threatening of course uh, winning the, the pawn and the game. Uh, so queen d4 forced uh, white to exchange the queens, queen d4, rook on d4, now rook f7 making a space for the bishop, now mating ideas are still on the table, but it's too late because a5, bishop on e6, a takes on b4, bishop on b3, and now king a5, a takes on b4, and that is a little trap here, uh, because if king takes, then we have c3, forking the king and the rook, and if rook takes, actually it's also c3, because all of these squares are controlled by white, so black would have to uh, give the exchange, and white would have winning the winning endgame, so black would have to play king b6, rook h7, and Veselin Topalov estimated, probably he estimated um, this endgame as better for white, white have of course um, extra three pawns, so um, black have exchanged, but probably Kasparov would win this, uh, but this was some chance for Topalov to play. He was not interested, he wanted to go sharp to the end, so he played king a3. And now uh, Kasparov have to be very, very precise. He has now the series of the only move, the only continuation uh, which is winning. So queen a6 starts these moves. We have king on b4. And now again, the only move winning for white is c3. And black doesn't have choice. If queen uh, on c3 is losing, queen b3 and that's uh, of course a checkmate is coming, rook a7 and that would be a checkmate. Uh, also king on b3 doesn't work because uh, queen a2 and is actually forcing this move but in the worst position because queen is on a2. So now queen b2, king d3, uh, bishop on f1 uh, is one possibility but white actually have much stronger move Rook on e7, creating the mating net, and this is still the threat, so black actually doesn't have move. Uh, queen on c3, maybe, but it doesn't work. Queen e2 with check, king d4, queen e5 with check, king c4, now rook c7, 
and of course after king on b3 uh, this is a checkmate so uh, not an option the only move for black here is king on c3 and now again the only move for white for Kasparov queen a1 check uh, king b4 is losing because uh, queen b2 uh, king a5 now queen a3 queen a4 and rook a7 okay so this is of course uh, losing so uh, the only move for black of course is king on d2 now queen b2 and now uh, black actually can't go to e5 because if they go on e5 then we would have rook on e7 so rook coming to the game uh, king f3 queen g2 and that's a checkmate so the only move is king on d1 and now Feel free to pause the video because Gary has again the only move which is winning the game. All other moves just losing, okay? At the threat, queen on d3. This is the hint for you. Queen d3 is coming with the check and now rook on a8 is coming. And there are some mating ideas of winning material and mating ideas. So uh, find the only winning move for white. While I enjoy my cup of tea for the last time in this game. Ready? The only move is spectacular. Bishop f1. So this is the move which Kasparov just found. And now if queen on f1, queen c2 with check, king e1, rook e7. And that's of course a checkmate. So not an option. If something like queen on d4, it also doesn't work because queen c1, this is also the checkmate because this bishop controls e2. So the only move which the power found is rook on d2. And now again, Gary Kasparov have to find the only winning move. So feel free to pause the video. Okay, this time is really the last one. Sorry about that, but this one is really the last one, which you have to find. And I'm gonna enjoy my cup of tea. The only move in this position is not taking the queen, because if you take the queen, then this is just a draw. The only move is rook on d7, pinning the rook on d2. What an incredible move. Can you imagine that? Now rook can take the queen. This is just stunning. And then, of course, uh, rook can come to d8 because we would have a checkmate. So the only move is rook on d7. And now bishop on c4 and look at this. In this position, black can't save this rook. The rook is under attack. Because if black try to save the rook, then queen e2 is a checkmate. So b takes on c4 is forced. Now queen on h8 and it's all over. There are a couple more moves. So we have rook on d3, queen on e8, and now c3. Queen on a4 with check, king e1, and now f4, f5, king c1. Rook on d2 attacking the h2 and now Gary Kasparov finish with the most precise move possible. Queen on a7 attacking the pawn on h7 threatening a check on uh, e3 and also uh, with the attack on c3. So uh, black would lose the, the last pawn. And also if black decide to play something like rook on h2, it's impossible because of the fork on g1 and that would pick the rook. So uh, it's also impossible. This is why in this position Veselin Toparov resigned the game. So this is why the game is called Gary Kasparov's Immortal Game. Pretty impressive isn't it and uh, yeah more quality content like this is coming so if you are interested don't forget to subscribe our channel and thanks for watching see you in the next one